Welcome to the Recovery Cast, brought to you by Hills and Rangers Private. Well, hello again. Welcome back to another episode of the Recovery Cast, proudly brought to you by Hills and Rangers Private. My name is Oliver, and I am a former addict in recovery. The Recovery Cast is a podcast created by people in recovery from addiction for people in recovery from addiction. There are many definitions of addiction, but we keep it simple. Addiction to us is when people use alcohol, drugs, or certain behaviors repetitively to their detriment, basically when it's a problem for them and their families. Therefore, an addict is not necessarily a needle-using junkie in a dark laneway, and an alcoholic is not necessarily a homeless man in a park. Recovery for us means using an active daily process or program to deal with alcohol use disorder, substance use disorder, or other behavioural addictions. People in recovery are committed to complete abstinence. This daily process is as important to being able to live normal lives as daily dialysis is for people with kidney problems. This podcast is meant as a support tool for those in recovery. I myself am a recovering drug addict, but however, each day we will focus on a different perspective of recovery. Everyone who participates in the podcast is in an active recovery program. We are not affiliated with any one recovery methodology and will focus on a variety of different types of recovery, including 12-step programs such as Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, and other recovery programs such as Smart Recovery, Celebrate Recovery, Recovery Dharma, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, and more. And a quick disclaimer, this podcast is intended to be informative. A podcast alone cannot support your sobriety and recovery, so we suggest it only as one component of a daily recovery routine. For more information on what recovery is, please go to www.rehab.melbourne. Now, we're going to do a reading from the Narcotics Anonymous Just For Today booklet on November the 3rd, and it is entitled No Matter What. We eventually have to stand on our own feet and face life on its own terms, so why not from the start? Basic text, page 88. Some of us feel that we should protect newcomers by telling them that while everything used to be horrible, now that we're in recovery, it's all wonderful. We feel that we might scare someone away if we speak of pain or difficulties, broken marriages, being robbed and the like. In a sincere and well-intentioned desire to carry the message, we tend to talk glowingly only about what's going well in our lives. But most newcomers already suspect the truth, even if they've only been clean for a few days. Chances are that the life on life's terms the average newcomer is experiencing is quite a bit more stressful than what the average old timer deals with each day. If we do manage to convince a newcomer that everything becomes rosy in recovery, we had better make sure we are there to support that newcomer when something goes wrong in their life. Perhaps we simply need to share realistically about how we use the resources of Narcotics Anonymous to accept life on life's terms, whatever those terms may be on any given day. Recovery and life itself contain equal parts of pain and joy. It's important to share both so that the newcomer can know that we stay clean no matter what. Just for today, I will be honest with the newcomers I share with and let them know that no matter what life brings, we never have to use drugs again. Well, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you all that uh, life happens. (laughs) And uh, although, you know, in my life, I've been kicking some serious life goals in recovery over the last four years plus. uh, Yeah, unfortunately, things do happen. And, you know, whether it's relationship breakdowns, loss of job, um, I don't know what else, you know, speeding tickets, uh, just stuff that I can't control. Unfortunately, yeah, it does happen. And no matter what, you know, I've learned skills in my recovery through all the recovery programs that I'm doing right now. And, and, you know, particularly Narcotics Anonymous for me, that's my story. Um, You know, I've learned skills to deal with things that come up. And I just realized that, yeah, it is life on life's terms. 
you know, I, I'm, I'm not the, um, the person in control of what's going on and, and things come up. I, I've had, I've moved into a new house recently and we moved in and um, the, the toilet was, you know, or the, the whole sewage system actually was blocked and, and we had sewage overflowing into the backyard. You know, that's a great example. It's not something that I can control and uh, ideally, you know, it shouldn't happen because it's a rental property, but, you know, it, things happen. Things do happen. Cars break down. Um, in recovery, I've lost jobs. I've, I've had a girlfriend that was unfaithful to me in early recovery. Um, oh, I don't know. I've had health problems, things like that. It all comes up and, and I'm able to deal with them today. I just ring people up who are also in recovery and say, oh, I'm having a bad time. Can you, you know, let's talk about it. Please help me. And um, yeah, no matter what, I actually literally do not have to use drugs or any you know any substance again i can i can sit with my feelings and and learn how to how to move forward in a constructive way that's what my recovery is about and today you know yeah <clears throat> talk about reading a little bit but i want to talk about one of the things that i personally use to um sort of it's part of a part of a bit of a cognitive behavioral therapy approach of of distracting myself when i'm not feeling great Something, something that I do so that I'm not sitting there thinking, you know, because my, my thoughts are a part of the problem with my addiction is that, you know, my mind is, um, it can run away from me and, and go and start thinking about resentments or how I'm unhappy with, as we mentioned, life on life's terms. You know, I can think, oh, that sewage problem, I wish the landlord would, would spend some money and get the pipes redone or something, you know, and it's, it's stuff that's beyond my control. I've done my bit. What do I do? What can I do to um, to just get out of myself and stop thinking about stuff that, that's annoying me or upsetting me? And for me, one of the biggest things is music, my enjoyment of music. I don't know if you guys have been listening to some of this stuff that I'm playing, the sounds underneath. Um, I'll turn it up a little bit now so you can hear what's going on. This is a, um, an artist or a couple of guys that I'm friends with. Their, their names are Albrecht Lebroy. And a lot of these tracks I've actually played guitar on. Um, they are an ambient electronic duo from Melbourne. And I met them through studying music at university, actually before I got clean um, and came into recovery. But anyway, basically, yeah, I'm a, I'm a musician. Um, that was my career that I sort of lost through... Well, not lost, but it changed dramatically through my the course of my active addiction. And what that looks like today is I'm no longer playing in pubs. I'm no longer going to clubs. I'm no longer in that environment of touring. And um, what came along with it was a lot of drug use and, and, and alcohol, you know, being prevalent in pubs and clubs and things like that. You know, I, I actually burned all my connections through my addiction anyway, you know, it's hard to play a good gig when you're intoxicated and it's hard to be reliable as well. Um, I actually just ended up basically moving on from that profession. However, you know, I can still play guitar. I can still sing songs. And what people talk about in recovery is that you get a life beyond your wildest dreams. And, and for me, today you know i can safely say that that i do have that that i am a guitar teacher and piano teacher i have lots and lots of students who really enjoy music and i get to pass on the enjoyment that i've that i've gotten from from music to them and of course when i'm struggling basically yeah back to recovery when i'm struggling i can get the guitar out and and have a play and and that gets me out of myself and and through my job I actually work as well at Hills and Rangers private as the music therapist as a as a um a specialist consultant basically I go in once a week and and I sit down with all the the folks in there and and we we play some music so there's a whole bunch of percussion instruments we sing we I I learn songs that they request and I come back in the next week and I sing them for them and we write little like percussion beats and things and record them 
And I always ask them, I say, what were you thinking about while we were doing all this? And their answer is, well, I wasn't thinking. And that's just so good because it's like a kind of meditation that music is for me. So after the break, I'm ac- I actually might uh, attempt to play you guys a song just for the just for the fun of it, really, just to um, show you what it's what it's like and, and how how music can sort of help me get out of myself. You're listening to The Recovery Cast by Hills and Rangers Private. Now playing daily on iTunes, Spotify and YouTube. For more shows, visit us at www.rehab.melbourne. That's right. You're on The Recovery Cast with Oliver. I was just um, talking about how I use music as part of my recovery program to get out of myself. The previous episode we did on meditation and I find it difficult to meditate but something that I don't find difficult to do is to play guitar and you know the the honest the real honest thing is that like some of the um the clients in Hills and Rangers private you know uh, they they come into my music therapy class and and they've they've never played an instrument before you know they're not musicians perhaps but we, we always have a go and we, we get a lot of enjoyment out of music, whether it's making it or listening to it, and it can really change your mood. So I'm just going to play you a song. Um, this is a song by a incredible, incredible musician, singer, performer, songwriter, Joni Mitchell, and this song is entitled A Case of You. Just let me turn my guitar on. Okay. Is it working? It is working. All right, here we go. Just before our love got lost, you said, I'm as constant as a northern star and Constantly in the darkness, where's that at? If you want me, I'll be in the bar On the back of a cartoon coaster In the blue TV screen light I drew a map of Canada, Canada Your face sketched on it twice You're in my blood like holy wine Tastes so bitter yet so sweet Oh, I could drink a case of you And darling And I would still be on my feet I would still be on my feet play one verse but um yeah thank you for for listening to that um what was i thinking about when i was playing that absolutely nothing and when when i listen to music you know i i kind of um i you know i get out of myself in that way and and it's it's an incredibly powerful tool that you that maybe in recovery, you know, when I when I got into recovery, I actually took on a whole bunch of new hobbies um, that that weren't music because I'd already done that. But what I've realised is that that it's just one of the tools, and and I do a lot, a lot, a lot of things for my recovery, whether it be music and hobbies and and making sure I have structure, trying to eat well, exercise, you know, go for walks in nature every day. And I do 12-step meetings, I do NA, I've started doing recovery dharma, I've started doing smart recovery. And look, you know, that's actually what it takes to to remain in recovery. If I got out of my treatment and I didn't change anything, then I would have relapsed within days, if not hours. But what I did do instead was I actually changed the way I lived and I changed 
it to the point where I actually don't get those feelings that I used to get that made me want to um, escape my addiction and try and try and get out of myself by putting a drug in my system. You know, that's what it is all about for me. It's it's that cognitive behavioral, it's finding a distraction, it's coping with those urges and and actually trying to um, to deal with it in a constructive way. Even though I was a musician before when I was in active addiction, I actually didn't understand that that I needed to use music in that way to get out of myself i used it as as a way to gain recognition and and sort of feed my ego and try and be the best musician and be better than other musicians and get more gigs and release more albums and be cool you know be that that cool musician that everybody knew in my little little scene of you know the the sort of east brunswick brunswick you know northern suburbs pub scene um and yeah, now, now I do it for myself and I do it to bring joy to other people and that serves me so much more. I, I found a way to make, to make my, my life better and, you know, music is one of those things and that's what I say when I do the music therapy classes at Hills and Rangers Private is I say that, that you can use music as a, as a powerful tool to get you out of yourself and and learn learn that thing learn that you can do that and when you leave hills and rangers private make sure you keep doing that whether that means that you put your headphones on and go for a walk and listen to your favorite songs or take up an instrument learn some classes do some youtube tutorials or get lessons or go and do karaoke you know go and do karaoke with your friends who are also in recovery that's that's classic that's one of those things that you can do it's all out there it's all options that you can do and for me you know it's it's helped me stay clean what else can i say that's that's how i do it and what they talk about in the reading is like no matter what you know yes no matter what but we actually have to change what we do and change our lives so that we can deal with life on life's terms Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I immediately get frustrated. I've got a text on my phone that somebody wants something, somebody wants me to do something, something I've done is not good enough maybe or, um, you know, work's hassling me or just anything, anything. I look at the news and I see something that's upsetting on the news, on my Facebook feed, whatever it is. And, And it's about finding ways to deal with that, of which... Playing and listening and enjoying music is one. You know, I, I feel actually better after singing and, and playing guitar for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. And look, on on the show, um, I'm I'm gonna do a call out for some musicians. If there's anybody who's in recovery and is a musician, I would love to have you come into the studio and play and feature on an episode. So stand by for that. But up next, in the next couple of episodes, we're going to be talking about my experiences in my second smart recovery meeting and my first recovery dharma meeting all of these things are awesome things that you can do to help treat your addiction and get out of yourself and and they're all on offer at hills and rangers private all of these meetings all of these classes that that are just going to change your life and and get you to the point where you know putting a a substance into your body so that you change the way you feel it's it stops becoming something that's required it's not required because you do all this external stuff that's the power of power of healing and the power of addiction and that's that's what what happens that's what we do i look forward to continuing this journey and sharing with you how i did it and how i continue to do it and how you can do it too any questions www.rehab.melbourne thanks very much guys have an awesome day i'll see you on another episode of the recovery cast cheers thank you for listening to the recovery cast for more visit us at www.rehab.melbourne